All right, testing, testing. What's up, guys? It's your boy, Daniel, on the DS pod. We have a special guest today, Keith McPherson. Shout out, Keith. What's going on, Keith? How's your day going? Daniel, what's up, man? My day is uh, going crazy already. I'm already, uh, you know, a couple hours awake. I usually wake up at 10, 1030 and have a ton of stuff to do between the baby and, uh, you know, yeah, taking care of things that, at home. Way, that's amazing news. That's it's yeah, really yeah, nice. Yeah. My son has been a blessing, but you know, doing the night shift at WFAN, I usually don't go to sleep till like three, four in the morning. That's and then crazy. I try to sleep till 10. I try to get a workout in, try and eat, try and uh, you look, you know, answer you look emails. Jacked. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I try to keep it, uh, you know, try to keep the dad bot away, try to keep it together. I don't have the same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to compare. Yeah. Nah, you know, so. It's going well. Uh, Thursday, I was just listening to BT and Sal's show for a bit, and uh, by the time we wrap up, I'll be able to start the ca- the uh, start of uh, Evan and Tiki. So, yeah. Got you. What's with Sal's hatred of the Jets? By the way, it's just an ongoing theme. Also, the reason why I bring it up is because I didn't pick up on it last year. Last yeah. season, I called into him a few times at night, and I asked him what his opinion is on Zach Wilson, et cetera, et cetera. And he, all he said was, "It's only his second year." He still needs time to prove himself, and let's see what's going to happen. And this year, we're four and three. We're winning games, as you can see. I'm a big Jets fan. I know you're yeah. a Cowboys fan. Everything with your brother. We could get into that a little later. But yeah. I'm just saying, he seems to be. He's on like a personal tirade against the Jets, and I just like. I'm just a little curious about it. Is he upset because the Falcons are never going to win a Super Bowl? Is what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> Here's what I think. I mean, and Sal, Sal hates when anyone brings up the fact that he grew up a Falcons fan, but. That's a valid fact. I think you need that information when you're listening to someone talk about teams. You're like, okay, who do you root for? That's why I make it known. Hey, I'm a Dallas fan. I'm, you know, observing right. both of these teams with no right. fandom. I think Sal being with BT, who is a diehard die Jets hard. fan, he yeah, will not too. he will not let this season go. He says the Jets are unkillable. Uh, after that Chiefs game, he's saying he's saying that like, Zach Wilson's a I've stallion. He's so a many superstar. Times on record, by the way, <laughs> we're unkillable. He's great. Oh, my God. So I think he's trying to balance out Sal, and he's right. trying to lean more Giants and lean into the Giants fans. But, yeah, he has been pretty consistent with the Jets' hate that they're not good, that Zach Wilson sucks, and they're not making the playoffs. So, uh, I don't know. Also, also, you bring up the Giants because he was a little bit wrong about that. Before the mm-hmm. season, he said, he's like, I think the Giants are in a better position to go further. They already won a playoff game last year. Daniel Jones, he's going to take that next step. He got his contract. What is going on in Giantsville? I mean, that contract looks like, I don't want to say the worst contract ever because I'm a, I've am i also watched the Knicks pay Joe. It was, Tino, it was an overpay. It was obviously exactly. an overpay. They paid the guy the market rate and uh, they kind of defaulted into that. Yes, yeah, Sal, Sal got on air and said that he thought the Giants could be Super Bowl contenders exactly. in the beginning of the season. Which, I, um, in my opinion, I thought he was, he was hitting the good good because – like I, i'm he just saying where, that loud pack where's no, the, where's he was the just talent on the team where's the talent show me he was just talent. leaning you have, into you have a the Sam narrative barkley who has a history of getting injured you have darren waller who also has a history of getting injured you have Both a quarterback injured, you just yep. gave you just 40 gave, million too i, I don't you, whatever you give J- Daniel Jones forty million after not picking up his rookie deal option the year before for twenty two million. That doesn't make any it, sense. And they didn't want to pay Saquon, who's like the main part of their offense. Which yeah, I don't. Eleven million. I don't fully it? understand the whole running back is not valuable conundrum. I, the way like a running back is like your passenger. Like if you were giving an example of driving a car, yeah. where you're running, you're running the navigation, you're running the music, you control the exactly. He's a sidekick to the quarterback, but they're interchangeable. And what it is is like the Chiefs can win the Super Bowl with a rookie seventh round running back in Isaiah Pacheco. And so that devalues the position. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the Giants, Saquon Barkley is the whole damn team. Look at the game against the Jets. They gave him the ball 36 times. They used the whole offense. They didn't even try to throw the ball. Yeah, yeah, that was pitiful. This my when I was watching the game on Sunday with my father. It's a tradition we have as old as time. All of a sudden, he sees on the screen Tommy DeVito is going in. He's like, "Who, oh, Danny DeVito? What's going on?" <laughs> you yeah, might Tommy as well. DeVito. You might as well. The pride of Don Bosco Prep. The kid. Uh, he's not an NFL quarterback yet. They don't trust him. Um, 
at least Daniel it, Jones it, is coming it's, back this it's week. Also, like you see, it's so funny because Evan the other day said it on the fan. He's like, when he came in the game, I thought, here we go, here comes that Giants guy who came off the bench, a no name, nobody, and he's just gonna score three touchdowns. And they the handcuffed him. The game. No, they, they didn't even let him throw the ball. They handcuffed him. Uh, and the Dable, funny, Dable was playing it safe with a little bit of a lead, and he played himself into a loss. I, I, I honestly, I like I respect him as a coach and everything he's done in his career. But this year has been, they, they come out, they look like they're not ready, they're not tackling, the play calling is questionable. What, what's going on? It just doesn't. It's a it mess. It's, it's a really mess. messy. They, they were so far ahead of schedule last year. That, and that, I think uh, they fooled I themselves. I think they fooled yeah. themselves. You know where I knew they went wrong this year when they when they came out and said that they had ten captains. You can't have ten captains on a team. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I There's eleven guys on offense. That. Eleven guys on offense. Eleven guys on defense. You can't have ten captains. They they, they traded one of their captains away in Leonard Williams. Yeah, former Jet. Former Jet. Directed by the Jet. Who did you hear what he said? Um, he said that you know he's been traded before in his career, and it was abrupt. It was out of nowhere, kind of throwing shade at how the Jets traded him to the Giants in the middle of the night. Um, but this time this around, long, Joe, Joe Shane, ready. yeah, they they brought him in, they talked to him, and they were you know they gave him the courtesy about you know how things were gonna go. So he right. like really signed off with the Giants and how he appreciated them, and now he's a Seahawk. Okay, listen, he's playing on a playoff team. I, I believe they're right now at the first in the in, the, in their division. Which is another thing. The 49ers have been on a losing streak. Which is it, does do you buy into that fraud mentality over there a little bit? Because no. the talent is stacked to the roof all around the team. Don't get me I, wrong, they have great coaching. But who I mean, Brock Purdy, that's that's he's won so many regular season games. And he should have won that game against the Browns. I mean, Jake Moody missed the game winning field goal, but you're seeing it, now, like, the defense is questionable. They always have injuries on either McCaffrey or Debo are always, you know, they're always like, oh, quad this. You know, I have them on fantasy. So I always, like, so I'm I. always, I have to always be aware of, like, their status. Which is so I actually, funny. I made a mistake this year. I had the number two pick, and I took Nick Chubb thinking, oh, McCaffrey's going to get hurt. Because years ago, I had the number one pick and took him on. The Panthers. You can't, and, you can't win. You can't win. And then Chubb matter. gets hurt and knocked out for the year. But yeah, anyway, back to the Niners. I think it's more about the league than the Niners. They've been good for years. They're, they've been pretty solid for years. Right. Rob Sala, your coach, was with the Niners when they were good a couple years back. That's how he even got the opportunity to coach the Jets. They have good coaches. They have good talent. D'Amico Ryans went on to coach the Texans after being the defensive coordinator over there. So they have the talent. They have the coaches. But it says more about the NFL. It is a war of attrition. Yeah, of uh, it's a rough game. It's a Guys are going to get hurt. It's a long You're season. Hit. You're getting hit. Any given Sunday, any team can beat any team. The the Browns with PJ Walker had no business beating the 49ers. The Broncos the NFL, had no be business beating the Chiefs last week. Exactly. No business. Exactly. And that was un that was just unacceptable to me. I mean, there were so many fumbles and interceptions. I mean, it happens, but like. You, you can't know, make you, this stuff up. That's yeah, why they say but, the NFL, you can't script it. You can't make the this stuff up. Nobody the knows The reason why happen. I bring up, like, the 49ers and that, like, top-tier echelon is because, to me, the way I view it, as all those top-tier teams have flaws. You look at the Eagles, they won some questionable games. You look at the 49ers, again, same thing. You look at the Chiefs, their offense seems to be one-dimensional when it comes to just throwing the ball to Travis Kelsey. Because outside of him, they don't really have those that many weapons. And then you look at the Bengals, who are always, you know, I mean, ever since they drafted Burrow and they have, um, um, what's it? Yeah, Jamar. Um, they're just, you know, they're one of the best teams in the league. And the Bills and and all those six, seven teams, and they look like they look like they'll lose to the Giants. You know what I mean? Like the Bills should have lost that game to the Giants. And, and the Eagles went to overtime to the Commanders and. It, like you said, any given Sunday, there's talent all over the league, even on the bad teams. But it's like, how much how much stock are you putting into seeing these teams and thinking Super Bowl, like when the 49ers well, go in the playoffs or the Eagles go in the playoffs? Because we know we know it's coming down to those five teams, right? Let's like I would I if Aaron Rodgers was still healthy, I would sit here and throw my hat in the ring and say, you know, the Jets are a contender as well. 
but I'm like, I'm reserved to say that I'm not against Zach Wilson as although I've watched him, you know, I've watched the most stagnant offense in the NFL over the last couple of years. So I don't like, I'm not going to sit here and sing his praises, but this year he's definitely taking another step. He's protecting the football. He's, he has the most, he has three fourth quarter comeback wins, the most in the NFL. He's making game winning plays. Like they, they had no business winning that giant game. What a miracle. I don't know what your reaction was sitting on that couch, but yeah, just those two things. If you want to speak on who's a real contender and you know, who's a fraud and, and obviously that Jets and Giants game go. Take I think it away. this year there's more parity in the NFL than we've had in a long time. I think I saw a stat. <clears throat> excuse me. There was a stat that said, I think it was the first time since whatever year that there were no 7-0 and teams or maybe 6-0 and teams. Like, there's no undefeated teams right now. I think we got to week seven. And uh, once the Eagles lost to the, the, Jets. the Jets, it's like there's no <laughs> – like you know, everybody's got a, a loss. A game that nobody had the Jets the, winning. The Niners there. lose to the Browns that same week, That's and it's crazy. like this is the first time since maybe like 2016 that, that we've got six. to week week six or week seven without an undefeated team. So that's parity. That shows you that like anybody can win. And I think that in the last few years, we've seen the Chiefs get to the Super Bowl. Uh, they've won two. They lost another one. Um, a couple years back, we saw the Rams and the Bengals in the Super Bowl, and that was kind of random to everyone. The Rams, very, I think people, very random. people expected the, Ra the Rams to get there because they went and got Stafford, they, and they already right. had a stacked they team. They, they had they Odell invested. Beckham Jr. They had Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald, Cooper Cup. But I think they this year – They bought one, as they say. They bought one. I think this year no one knows who's going to be in the Super Bowl, and, and a lot of people are just going to say it's the Chiefs, but they can be beat too. So that's good for the sport. That's good for the league. That's good for the fans. And that's good it's for Jets good. fans, right? Jets fans can believe, yes. hey, it's any, it's anyone's game. And like you said about Zach Wilson, Zach Wilson isn't good. Zach Wilson sucks. We know that he's he's a lower tier quarterback in the NFL week to week, but he does have arm strength. He does have some mockery about him. He showed me a lot in that Sunday night football game against Taylor Swift and the Chiefs. If he <laughs> followed up, if he followed up the performance he had against the Patriots with another clunker. Then you would have had to bench the kid, but he, sure. he balled out in that game. He fumbled and fumbled the game away, but he showed you that he's going to compete. And even I love what he said this past Sunday, 24 seconds, no problem. He's been hanging around Aaron Rodgers now. He's got confidence that he can get it done. I'm just waiting for him to ball out and have that 300 yard, three touchdown game. Yeah, me too. It just, it just seems like it's, it's not going to happen. So who's frauds, who are pretenders, who are contenders? I think it's any given Sunday. I think, Pretty soon we're going to start seeing because now the bye weeks are starting to roll. Like the Jags have a bye. The Lions have a bye. Like now the, the bye weeks are starting to hit. We're going to start to separate teams. But like look at the Raiders. The Raiders at three and five. They let the trade deadline pass and they say uh, we're going to we're going to fire our GM and our head coach and go in a new direction. Like it, the NFL is nuts. We don't know who is who and what is do you, what. And do what's you know happen. the truth? Do you know the truth on how that happened? Because I saw a story on Twitter. I just wanted to see if I could verify it. I think Devontae Adams had something to say. I think a lot of guys had something to say. Josh wow. McDaniels, he, he's a failed head coach now twice. He failed twice. in Denver. Denver. And he had a similar win-loss record in Denver as he had with the Raiders. And uh, Mark Davis just came out to say, I haven't seen progress. I've only seen regression. Tom Brady the part owner of the Raiders now. And he couldn't save Josh McDaniels, Daniels, his former offensive coordinator. So right. I think they just didn't like McDaniels. They didn't like the GM. And they want to try and save this season and go in a different direction. And you couldn't wait any longer. They think they can beat the Giants. The Giants are coming to town. And then the Jets are coming to town. They're looking at this part of their schedule like this is where we can get some wins. And who's their quarterback right now? I'm saying They're Aiden O'Connell. Aiden O'Connell, rookie. Uh, who, who today, is? Is, today is actually Jimmy Garoppolo's birthday. They benched the guy on it. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. Terrible. You can't, if you're a Jimmy G, you can never complain. He got paid. So how much money has this guy made? Oh, this guy's made over $100 million in the NFL, and, and he's never been good. There's never been one season where he was a top quarterback, where he was a Pro Bowl quarterback. Like, just he's got give a me Super the Bowl, money. Just give me the money and throw me finessed. in, coach. I'll get Man, the same record. He, he finessed being Tom Brady's backup. He finessed his way to the bag with the Niners. and uh, It's like you know, Tristan even, Thompson with LeBron. Yeah, Tristan Thompson is still in the league. Like, he's the playing. League, he's paid. playing for the Cavs. I'm watching yeah. on the Cavs last night and the night before with the Knicks. I'm like, this guy's still in the league. Khloe Kardashian. <laughs> Khloe Kardashian. <laughs> Crazy. I don't know, but that's it. Just goes to show you that LeBron, LeBron, and Brady 
they the success that they've had, you know, mm-hmm. over their careers, which is probably, you know, that's that's it. You can name one or two Jordan or whatever who have had that level of success. But the success did so much for their coaching staff and for their teammates. The players as are well. out. Yeah, just, guys are still just, making money off just, of that. It's really it's amazing. It's like insane. Like that's how good they were at their job. That 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 other people who went to work with them were also, you know, like benefiting. Yeah, these guys are still I benefiting off of their. I greatness. can't imagine being that good at something that other people would like. I'm not even, you know what I mean? I think like, I can. I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> I like the confidence. So just another thing. Um, coming into the season, I don't know. Um, what you you switched from. Originally, you were on ten to twelve, and then you got the overnight after Sal got switched or something. Or is no, it Chris so McMonagle still? Uh, this a is what happened. Night? I used so I've always been the nighttime guy. I've never done the overnight. But what happened? I used to get put on in that bridge show time. I used to get on right after Carton and Roberts. But Tommy and Chris relationship with Craig at all? I'm just of curious. course, yeah, of course, yeah. Um, He's so funny. He's I'll say, such a funny guy. I'll see. Yeah, Craig is Craig is a character, bro. He's he's a different human being than I've ever seen or met. Um, his story is ridiculous. He's always yeah, been good to me, crazy. kind to me. But did you um, ever watch that uh, the the documentary? The HBO? Yeah, I remember going on air and I was like, somebody should do a documentary on Craig. And they're like, there already is one on HBO Max. And I went and <laughs> watched like, it. It was cool to show my wife. I'm like, this is where I work. Like. This, do you see all this WFAN stuff and like the past of WFAN? Like this, I made right. it to WFAN. Like this is right. where I work. Like you understand that this is like big. Like she, this is. A, does she appreciate the level of magnitude that that carries? I'm just curious. Oh, of or, course. Like we no, went to like, college is together. A, is she a sports fan at all? That yeah, she she's like... a, she's a Yankee fan, Patriots fan. Um, I'm getting her into the Devils. She's not really into the NBA, but she roots for the Nets for me. But she grew up a Yankee fan, Patriots fan, um, and we went to college together. So she was dropping me off uh, at campus to do my college radio show. She was on my college radio show. Uh, I don't think anybody actually thought that I would be able to make it to New York City radio, but it's cool that it That's has so come awesome. full circle. And That's my wife so and awesome. now the, the mother of my child is, um, you know, rewarded and gets to tell people, I told you so. I had an eye for talent. I told you Keith was good at what he does. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that Craig Doc was very interesting. Even the fact, like, I'm from Jersey. I'm from the Shore area. And uh, I grew up going to Atlantic City. You start driving Atlantic City as soon as you can drive. Like 16, right. 17 years old, we're getting in the car and we're going to fuck around in Atlantic yeah. City. Yeah. Craig was taking helicopters from New York to AC to gamble <laughs> high stakes uh, so blackjack what, tables. But what's the what's the reason he was taking a helicopter? Because he was going so much that it would be too time consuming to go on. You he know, had to be on the radio at 6 a.m. with Boomer. So he's in the casino till 3 a.m. taking a helicopter back to New York because he's got to do a show. He was pulling all nighters just to gamble high stakes, uh, hundred thousand dollar hands of uh, blackjack. But yeah, um, with Craig, what I'll say is um, I've always like known who the guy was. I remember watching him on Michael K when he left and he kind of spoke about what was going on um, when he came back to WFA and I'm like, I can't believe they're letting this guy back. All right. Some people, some people feel a lot of different ways about Craig, but I think he's genuinely a good dad, like a good guy, a good father and trying to do right and trying to move forward with his life. And he deserves yeah. a second chance. But I man, definitely he, think so too. Is, I respect it. In the history of WFAN, he is a lightning rod in WFAN yeah. because he's a legend. He he had Boomer and Carton, which was huge. He got locked yeah. up, and that destroyed that show. Um, right. Well, obviously, Geo stepped in, and the rest of those right. guys carried it the way. But, like, imagine if they kept going. Like, right. it would be the biggest. It was. It, he had the biggest so much, show he had ever. so much confidence on air that he would say stuff, like, to callers, like, um, like, you could listen to anyone in the world talk about sports. And yet you're here listening to me, and I know I could say whatever I want, and you're still right. going to come back. And because he knows I'm that, like, that guy, like I'm yeah, him. <laughs> he he's a radio professional. He's got a great shtick. He doesn't know everything about sports. He doesn't act like he knows everything about sports, but he knows how to host a radio show. And yeah, he comes back. Personality. And with it. They put Evan with him, and then they create Carton Roberts, which was really good. They had a good yeah, two, almost yeah. three year run, and then Fox Sports One offers him millions to do TV, and now he's building that show. Yeah. And that has shifted WFA. And now we have BT and Sal. Now, like right. we, like you said, we have right. Chris on. Well, the by the way, they are great together. They are. I mean, great they together. are 
like the I same came in, era. I'm just they're coming like coming into the season. You know, it was kind of like it's it's like a new team. It's like we yeah. don't know how they're gonna gel. We don't know their chemistry. But they, they're pros. That's, I listen that's a, to them all the time. They're amazing. That's the first thing I said about them. They are radio professionals. They have twenty plus year careers. I think BT's been doing this for thirty years. Sal twenty years. And they just they know how to host a sports talk radio show. Um, I disagreed with what happened with Carl Banks, but I understood where they were coming from. I understood, um, you know, how it got there and that, you know, uh, it, it's not great for anyone how it ended. It is just, you know, it got kind of emotional and contentious. And um, uh, that's it for Carl Banks coming on their show. But they're, 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 they did a show today talking baseball. They are baseball minds for sure. They know yeah. enough about uh, football. Wait till they really start to lean in on the Knicks in a month or two. That's going to be interesting. But back to the question about me, I, I came in to quote unquote replace Steve Summers, uh, which uh, originally like I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, this guy's a legend. This isn't going to blow over right like or go over right. And I couldn't wait for it to blow over the initial like um, response to like, who the hell is this guy? He's a podcaster. He's an Internet guy. He's never done radio before. Um, and I, I said, I wasn't trying to walk in Steve Summer's shoes. I wasn't trying to fill his shoes. I was just going to be me. And so that seven to 12 slot is what I thought I'd be working. But then with the Nets games and with the Yankee games and with Monday night football, Thursday night football, um, I was doing the bridge show. I don't know if you remember last year, I was coming in sometimes live from Barclays center. Cause I go to a lot of Nets games in Brooklyn. Um, I just, yeah. I, you know, I'm used to going, getting on the train and going to Brooklyn. So I asked, I was like, hey, can I do the bridge show from Barclays Center? I would just put on the headset with the guys that called the game, and I would do the bridge show. I would watch the game, and then the fourth quarter, I'd head back to the station and then host till 2 a.m. What they wow. did was take take the bridge show away and put Tommy and C-Mac. Remember, they were alternating bridge shows, and then once Craig left, they put C-Mac on the overnight. They moved Sal. Yeah, with BT. He's, he's also really good. Yeah, we're. Exactly. I mean, you're not gonna get on air. Yeah, exactly. Like, all good, you you have to like... be. You have to be well spoken. You have to be well versed in all sports, and you have to be um, good at taking calls and talking to people, or they're not gonna put you on air. They. I mean, yeah, even that's... even when I was out, when I had my paternity leave and I was out for two months, you know, even some of the guys that they had fill in that weren't as experienced, I thought they did pretty well. Yeah. So yeah, I never did the overnight. The overnight is is technically twelve to five, two to five. But what they did was um, give me extra time because my shift's supposed to end at 12. But when there's a game, my shift ends at 2, which it is Got what it is. It. I, I don't mind. it. I, it's late. What I do mind is New York closing the Holland Tunnel. That shit's trash because <laughs> I live in Jersey City where I could get home right, in 15 right. minutes if I can right. go through the Holland Tunnel. I got to drive through the Lincoln Tunnel and everybody in the city. Like Halloween a couple nights ago, they did this big zombie march down. Uh, I don't even know what street it was maybe Broadway, and there was a hell of traffic. And I'm like, I'm trying to get home. It took me 45 minutes to get home. That's the city, man. That's when the I'm city. burning it, when crazy. I'm burning it fast, I can usually get home in 25 minutes through the Lincoln Tunnel. But yeah, exactly. That's New York. Like, there's so many people there. Yeah. I hate crowded. the city. Yeah. I mean, it listen, sucks. It yeah, sucks. The city I, I sucks. Used, I used to love it, but then you, you sit in traffic for long enough in your life. You waste your you, time. You waste yeah. your whole, you waste your whole life sitting in traffic. Yeah. You think, I think about crazy. The hours that I've spent, I'm like I said, I'm from the shore, bro. Like right. I, I grew up in right. Monmouth County, so yeah. like it's completely different. You're never sitting in traffic like that in Monmouth County where I grew up. Right. Never. Right. Maybe right. maybe a little bit of the shore traffic in the summer when summer. they say the quote right. unquote Bennies come down. But like if you're from there, <laughs> you know how to you know how to maneuver. You know how to take back streets. Yeah, you know how to still, like not get still stuck know on your like way around. You still yeah. Know your you way you don't get stuck on Highway 35 in traffic if you're from there. You know how to you know dip out of that. That's pretty crazy. How did it? How did it? I'm just saying. Your your what was your first entry? You said you were replacing Steve Summers, and right away they gave you, they gave you a half hour. They gave you an hour. What what what, what so, it looked like? August 25th, 2021. I had an audition night. It was 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. and it was after a Mets game. There was no Yankee game, and I remember the Yankees were off, and I came in prepared with like, gonna tell my life story to qualify myself, and then I'm gonna talk. <laughs> all about the Yankees and the winning right. streak that the Yankees were on. And you were excited. You were I was, excited. I mean, I was more than excited. I was nervous. I was scared. Right. I I thought it was going to be my big break. It was, but uh, that night the Mets lost to the Dodgers three to two. And um, uh, Luis Rojas pulled 
Taiwan Walker, and all the Mets fans wanted to do was call and complain about uh, the manager, the Mets, Buck. and and no, it was before Buck. It was before Buck got hired. It was Luis Rojas was the uh, 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 the manager. So yeah, this is 2021. So what I found was I did my three hours, and I I always had support from the internet, Yankees Twitter, Nets Twitter, and just people that have been following gotcha. me online and. That kind of popped. Um, WFA, and I remember talking to Tom Izzo, he said, you know, we've never had an unknown, a first-time guy get on our airwaves. And, and have um, this traffic? Yeah, have this much traffic with people adding oh, WFAN and talking about WFAN. So that told them something right there. Um, That's awesome. September came and went, and I was reaching out to Spike Eskin, who was the new program manager at the time, and I'm like, yo, I need a redo. Like, I, I feel like I suck. Like... Like, can I get another audition? Like, can I try again? I can do better. I know I can do better. I've been listening to the station more and more. I think I can do better. I just was like trying to do my own thing. And he was like, nah, don't worry about it. Like, we'll be in touch. And I'm like, fuck. Um, That's I'm it. Like, you, you, yeah, you I'm like, like cut, right? I'm thinking, I'm like, I, I'm trying to get a weekend shift. I would have probably even taken just like a couple overnight fill in spots. Some time passed right. and October comes and he reaches out to me and he says, um, we played your tape. And we've, you know, counted up all the like interactions and stuff online and we've spoken internally and we want to offer you a full time gig as the nighttime host. Yeah! Um, <laughs> but what what needs to happen is Steve Summers. We've you know, we've talked to Steve Summers. They they offered Steve he, Summers the overnight to write off on it. Well, they were going to bump him to, to two to five or 12 to five. And he said, no, thanks, because it's too late at night and he's 75 right. years old. Right. Right. So they had to find another guy to do the overnight. And that's when they brought Salicata into that spot um, full time. And they put us together in the New York Post as like Keith McPherson and Salicata taking over nights at the fan. And Schmooze did his final schmooze. And then here I come out of nowhere, blazing my trail. And it's been almost two years now. So um, I, I've made that's a awesome. lot of I've made that's a lot awesome. of waves. I've, I've made a lot of noise. I think I've I've carved out my spot. And now. You know what I'm doing now is like I I don't care I'm the youngest host I don't care that I'm the new, like newest host I don't care that I'm the only black host well Tiki but like Tiki's right. a NFL running Tiki's back. an that's, NFL legend that's right. different like he's not a regular black dude on the air like, like right he, he's, he he's has a former the, he has Giants it. he's the arguably the best Giants running back of all unless time. you count Saquon <laughs> no, I don't Tiki was definitely better than Saquon so um I've uh, kicked some doors time, down so. I've I've made my name and now moving forward now this third year i'm just standing on it like I'm, I'm standing on the fact that i think i'm one of the best hosts on the fan i'm standing on the fact that i yeah, made it to wfan are, uh i'm standing on the fact that i i even parlayed that into an mlb network nationally televised tv show um i've got some other things in the works you do you do um, the uh you do the um something with um you do something with um, I forget now for Yes Network right before the base the Yankees game. I so I was on. yeah I was doing stuff. What was with that yes called? Network. Tell, tell us something new, Keith. Uh, tell me something new. cool with with John and Susan. Cool. With John and um, Susan, yeah, in that's the great. in the Yankees pregame, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. awesome, man. I mean, I could tell you about John and Susan. I no, I always it's also, admired it's them. It's really cool to see you smash like a very short window and to see yeah. you smash like a four hour. It just shows the diversity <laughs> of the of the you know the abilities that you have. It's it's really yeah, incredible. You got to be versatile you gotta you gotta yeah. be able to do different things uh, and that's what i try and showcase my talent like okay I, they give me one minute to come in with hey keith tell me something cool and it could be uh something some type of history some type of stat something about the matchup something about the fans something from yankees twitter that they don't know and i just right. hit them with that every right. day and then uh five hour show is hard to do you know how do you um, that's what i wanted to ask you also how do you when you're doing a five hour show and you're doing it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and if nothing happens, you know that week in the sports world, I don't know. Let's say you're in the summer. Impossible. The only thing that's happened is baseball. Impossible for up? nothing to happen. No, I just because sometimes I've oh. heard you on the radio going on with a caller for like so long, and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, is the only reason why he's going on? Why you show me the time? No, so oh, no, I'm, um, I'm showing notes? you my notes. This is yeah, how yeah, I, no, I got you. how I do every every day. I have notes and I take screenshots from Instagram, Twitter, every right. single day of this. Like this goes back how? years now. Like that is insane. This goes back to that's 2021 on the bottom, um, <laughs> and you see a Yankees opening day. Like, um, there, there's there's never 
a day where there's nothing in the sports world. There's always news, and you can always manufacture something. And with the callers, I give the, the callers time. Um, people call my show and they want to talk to me. I appreciate that. People call my show and they have something to say. I'm also set, setting myself apart from the other hosts who they, 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 they'll go to someone, hey, this is Joe from Manalpin. Go for it, Joe. And Joe will be like, ah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Brian Cashman and the Yankees. And her, thanks for the call, Joe. And the guy says like right. two sentences. It's like, have the conversation with the caller for everyone to hear. And there is right. a lot of times where someone will say something to me and, I, and I'll either educate them or I'll ask them a question so we have the full out conversation. It shouldn't just be, okay, you're taking a call. They're popping in with a take or they're popping in with a thought and you're trying to rush them off the air. I'm a solo well, that, that's, that's how it is by more like by BT and Sal, just because they have the such two an of them. Impl- right. And they, have and they both want to talk. Callers. And that's right. what happened with the Carl Banks interview, right? They said they wanted to have a voice. They felt like Carl was, you know, kept it going and talking over them and t- saying the same things. And they wanted to have a voice. And I spoke out against that you. on my show. I'm like, you want to have a voice so bad, but your take was wrong that you you hung up the phone on the guy so you could talk i felt like that was disrespectful and that's why i spoke I about you. me i'm like i respect everyone i respect guests i respect callers i respect my my fellow wfan guys but i deal with right and wrong and i think when it's all said and done i'm gonna be on the right side of history and i am um carl banks <laughs> is no longer carl banks is no longer calling into wfan it's made national right. news and i was the only host to defend him and um it's not a hill that all i'm right, gonna die you. on but it's like I think it's a simple thing. It's just common decency. If someone is taking time out of their day to call your show, to listen to your show, give, you them, give them some time. time. Yeah, give them yeah. some time. I got you. You know, you hit me up. I'm, um, um, I got. You could probably hear my son in the background crying. Uh, I've got a ton of things to do. My my room is a mess. I was in the middle of a a, a workout. I had to run out to You're get awesome. cash awesome. to pay my nanny. But I came back and I'm like, hey, just give me 10 minutes and I'll give you time to do a podcast. We've already been rolling for over I, half an hour. I really I can't thank you enough. No, it's it's legit. It's been awesome. And I know I, I know you didn't mean to, like, push me off at all. I just I know you're busy. So I I kind of just, you know, waited for you to have the right time. And then, uh, you know, we got it done. Last week was I, hectic. I, with the I Paul Banks open, stuff, and I hope uh, you'll be open to recording again in the future. But I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah, when things slow on. down, I mean, I, I, I made my name doing podcasts. I remember reaching out to people to get guests, and it would be cricket. So I remember there were people I really wanted to. That's how it is. To get on, and they're like, Unless, yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll yes you to death. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, I'll do it. And, and then, then, never and then they don't it. show up. That's so funny because that's exactly how I thought it was going to go down when you said on the radio, you said. Yeah, hit me on Twitter and uh, we'll do something. I thought it was kind of like, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I would say like five people did that. I did a podcast yesterday. I did this kid Ben's podcast like two weeks ago. I'm doing yours. I have a couple other That's ones awesome. in the works. I got to um, see those. That's great. Yeah, I, I'm I'm a regular dude, man. I'm blessed that I get the opportunity to be on WFAN. But like I said, I don't forget where I came from. Like I was literally grinding like this during the pandemic. Uh, doing videos like this every day, trying to get guests every day, I and got you. Uh, you know Respect. you gotta you gotta give it back. You gotta pay pay it forward. And that's I, what I just right just seeing your journey from like you said, like just being a just content maker as like podcasts and getting to the WFAN level and being in that building with those guys and having those relationships. It's just it's such an incredible success. Like in the way I see it. It's like a guy who set out to achieve his goals and he achieved them. It's just, yeah, you know, it's 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 rare. I, success is success is hard, right? People, you know, we we see successful people, so we we take you know we take it for granted. But it's so challenging as an individual to go and tell yourself in your head, like I, I was very nervous about filming this as well. Like now I'm not nervous because we just talk, talk for a half hour. <laughs> no, Good. I'm just saying, like I'm not nervous. But in the beginning, I was like, what am I going to say? What are we going to talk about? Obviously, we had flow, so we're good. But I just mean, like, it's such a challenging thing. Like, I always wanted to be a comic. I always wanted to get up on stage and make people laugh. And I tried to do it, and I did it. And I had, like, this anxiety panic attack afterward. I don't even know what it was. That I got more afraid after I went up than before I went up. And it was just because now it was real. Now people saw me. And now people people were, like, texting me, like, yo, you're not funny, bro. Like, whatever. I was like. (laughs) People were cruel. No, I and, didn't like uh, stand up comedy didn't... is the hardest form of entertainment. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, I remember talking to Robin Lumberg about it and he he said to me he's like if you can do 5 hours of radio by yourself, 
you could do a five minute comedy sketch. Yeah. And I, sure. and I'm, I thought about it at Monmouth University when I went to school. We had a one credit course that you could take on stand up comedy, and I almost took it, but I was like, <laughs> one credit. One, you could get one credit, and That's I think it was so like funny. 30 minutes a day on how to do stand up. And I, I was just close to graduating where I didn't have the time and didn't need right, the one credit. You. But I, That's I've so always funny, wanted though. to explore that too. I, I, I have a ton of respect. We should go on stage together. We'll go on stage together one night. We'll I got no down. material. I, it would take me some time to work on it, but I've got a ton of respect for you even just saying that you tried to do it and that you wanted to do it and you attempted uh, to do it. And then the panic attack, the anxiety hit years. you after. It took me years to just push myself to just do it. So it's yeah. like, I, that's why I relate to it so much that you just, you kind of manifested your own reality, which now it brings me back to Aaron Rodgers, the manifestation, you know, it always comes back to Aaron Rodgers because is he coming back in your opinion? Is he coming back? He did the speed race surgery. He's on the field. He's taking dropbacks. I don't know how, like, I know you're not a Jets fan, but how. I'm a football like, was, fan. Exactly. I've been watching you, this you, guy's whole career you, from You Cal were on to, the radio for six months leading up to the season. Do you understand that, that there was Aaron a time of every day, day where I couldn't flip on WFAN and all I would hear about, Aaron Rodgers coming to save the Jets. Aaron Rodgers coming to save the Jets. Aaron Rodgers coming to save the Jets. And I have a personal story about it. I actually went ahead and I bought tickets for the first game, as expensive as they were, $300 for the cheapest ticket in the building. Yeah. Me and a buddy of mine, diehard Jets our whole lives, we said, there's no way we're, wishing, we're missing opening day. We leave, we leave Brooklyn at around 4 o'clock. We, we clock out of work early. We left Brooklyn about 4 o'clock. We ran into traffic. We had a flat tire on the way. We had to go fix it. It was a whole to-do. We're sitting in the car. We're like, we're not going to make it on time, whatever. And, and he's sitting me, he looks at me, he's like, he's like, okay, maybe we'll miss one drive, right? We're still here. We're still, you know, whatever. Because we wanted to be there for the tailgate. We wanted to celebrate a new era of football where we're for finally, we're not fucking losers. Excuse my French, but the Jets no, as I a know. franchise have been stepped on for, for, for years. And and I'm, I, we get to the building. It's late already. It's it's the middle of the first drive. And I we're walking up the stairs to our seats. And we hear the, the 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 noise go out of the building. We hear the oh. Oh, oh. and then we hear like the boo, the screaming, whatever, like just that whole like and we're like, what happened? All I thought was interception, you know, fumble. Whatever. We get to our seats and everyone is like like this, like next thing you know, he's on a cart and then uh, Zach Wilson the running play. Zach, I'm like, we're seeing this shit again. I, I wanted Mike White back. I wanted Mike White back. I was wearing the Mike White shirt on the plane. That's me. Uh. I, I was like, and my, and I come back from the game, and my dad's like, "Are you okay?" Like whatever, because he knew he knew it would get to. Me. He said, "Don't get your own stuff. It's the same old thing." <laughs> It's just too funny. Like you'll you'll so remember funny. that forever. So two parts. I have a story, and I've told it on WFAN, and then I'll I'll say whether I think Aaron Rodgers is coming back or not. Um, for me, I'm watching the game, and the first play, Aaron Rodgers like has to evade a defender and throw the ball away, and I'm like, oh, he's under duress. And then the next thing, I see an alert that the Yankees Red Sox game has been postponed. So the Jets game was on ESPN Radio. We don't carry Jets games but we do carry Westwood One's coverage of Monday Night Football. I have to go to work now because there's no Yankee covers. There's no Yankee game. I get the text from my bosses like, hey, you got to get on air in the next like 30 minutes. I live 15 minutes away. I'm like, I already got my backpack. I'm out. So right. I saw the first two, maybe three plays from Aaron Rodgers. By the time I go downstairs, get out of my garage and turn the radio on, they're talking about, they're like, now they're like, there's a cart coming out and, I'm, I'm adjusting the radio. I go back to WFAN. Ricky Ricardo is on. I go back to ESPN radio, and they're like, uh, we think it's an ankle injury. Aaron Rodgers is down. I'm like, no way in hell. Did he, <laughs> he got hurt. They're like, now the card is coming out. I'm, I'm in, in the shock. Time, in the time where you were walking down the steps. In the time from me, doody, 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 do, down the steps, starting the car, Getting out of my garage, turning the radio on to hear what was going on in the game, Aaron Rodgers' season was over. Or was it? So whatever. I, I go to WFA and I host. I end up getting like a four or five hour show that night. And I'm saying they got to get another quarterback. They got to get another quarterback. Zach Wilson ain't it. They don't get another quarterback. Now here we are going into week nine. I joked on air. I'm like, 
First, you saw Aaron Rodgers just throwing the ball. Then you saw him put a couple, Drop, you know. Right. Yeah. Wait, I'm like, it, next thing back. you know, he's going to be. You're a quarterback. Also, you're yeah, a quarterback. He's going to be jogging around, throwing the ball on the run this week. Monday Night Football, he's going to put a couple steps to it and throw it on the run. Is that fast? Is that fast or what? That's fast. It, it That's defies. two months. It defies logic and modern medicine. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Richard so I think Sherman, Richard Sherman said he wasn't out of he wasn't off crutches out of a boot for for nobody for, is for for two you're, months. You're a, That's you're, crazy. Your Achilles, if you're if you you can't stand. <laughs> really, There's no really, you you tear rupture your Achilles. That is the whole. That's your base. So. Yeah. One, I'm like, how much did he rupture or tear it? They didn't really tell us all of that. Maybe it wasn't a full tear. Two, what is this surgery that they did? Maybe the surgery is some type of miracle. And then three, it's Aaron Rodgers. He smokes ayahuasca. He's, he's going listens, into the darkness. He's listening <laughs> he to, to dolphins so well. mating. He's he's probably in his house. He probably has a hyperbaric chamber in his house to sleep in so that he's healing faster. And what I hate is that I'm like, this is a Jedi mind trick. Don't believe it. But I'm like, I hope that I'm not eating my words come week 17, 18, where this guy gets cleared to play. And if the Jets are still alive, he shows back up because it is going to be it's going to be pandemonium if this guy oh can gosh. actually come back. So I'm like, maybe I should stop being so sure <laughs> of so myself. Sure of yeah, because if he comes back, we're all going to have egg on our face. All of us that said, no way, he's, he's done. He's 40. He's not going to come back. Like he's showing you that he's working that, on it. That he's is showing what, you that. That is literally what every. Don't Jets count him right out. Now. That's, Their that's what he is, wants. We want to get to a playoff relevancy by week, right? Like we just need to stay above ground. They'll we be alive by week three 17. games in a row. They'll still be alive in the last three, four weeks of the season. And he could show that he could get on the field. And, 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 I mean, I don't even know. We don't even know what we're getting, though. Like, we, he wasn't that He'll great be better than Zach year. Wilson. I, okay, I keep that. hearing people call WFAN and they say, if if he's back, do you do you bench Zach yeah, Wilson for him? No, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I heard that also. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah. This is one of the best quarterbacks you've ever seen. One also, of the greatest also, of all time. You you can you're gonna have Zach Wilson for the next 15 years if you want. It's not like, about Zach Wilson. You did all of this to get this man. If exactly. this man is clear to did play, you go get him. He Zach is Wilson a, got benched from he Mike is a White guru. last year. Like, what are we talking he's about? He's a football mastermind. I I, what, I I can see the way he talks on Pat McAfee show. He, he knows football like it's the back of his hand. Like, it's just not. More, more than more than more, most guys in the NFL, more, more than, than most I coaches. Know, more than I know how to take a piss, which, you know what I mean? Like that, <laughs> Which is natural like, for you. Which yes. is natural Reading for defenses. More natural, exactly. Did you he see him with, um, with Peyton Manning and Eli Manning on the Manning cast? Yes, I did, yes. Amazing. He, he was great there talking football. I'm like, this guy yeah. is a football mind. If he He's definitely enjoying there, himself. As much as he, you know, he's upset that he can't play, but he's... Because he's, he's he, in New York. He's in the he, media spotlight. Is he also like not, a diva a little bit? Is he sure, also like he but wants he's to earned be, that. He's not in right. Wisconsin anymore. So, yeah. yeah, I hope he does come back because it'll be a ridiculous story. NFL, you can't make this up. And I'll eat my words because I'm like, oh, this is a Jedi mind okay, trick. I the story, hope, I the story should it. be I about Zach Wilson it. being the quarterback to lead the Jets back to the playoffs after we left them for dead last year. But if Aaron Rodgers is back, Zach Wilson takes a back seat, and it'll be one of the most ridiculous stories in NFL history and that this can, guy was if, able to come back if they by week 18. If they can go on a playoff run, if they can go on a playoff crazier. run, even more. That's just insane. He, hey, don't, don't count him out. That's what he got on McAfee and said. He said, count, yeah. count me out. Give me your timelines. Tell me what I can do. Tell me what do. I can do. Let's go. Are you not entertained? <laughs> yeah, we are still. It's still the Aaron Rodgers show. We'll see. Did you did you ever see Craig wearing his Jets hat where the hat is like of course four that times big ass hat? Of his body? <laughs> yeah, that big I want to be hat. I want to be at the Super Bowl parade and I want to see him wearing the belt with that hat. I, I go, give him credit. I told you. For for two weeks, he was saying that the Jets would beat the Eagles because his wife is from Philly. And he's connected to a lot of Philly fans. So he's always on that Foo Philly for two weeks on TV. He said that the Jets would end that 12-game losing streak. And, and they, they would did. beat the Eagles. And they did. And they so. did. Dang. I'm so high. You understand? I thought we were going to be one in six. That's oh, yeah. Thought. I thought it was over. thought it was I over. I thought it was over. I didn't think we would beat the Bills. I didn't think we'd be. We lost four by plays a field goal four, to the Four Chiefs. plays in. Four the plays Chiefs in. should have lost that game, that stupid pass interference call or that hold on the outside on Sauce. That was a ridiculous call. I didn't want to talk about it. But the Chiefs got every 
The Chiefs the get every call terrible. they want. The I, whatever, I don't know. Could you explain one thing to me? One thing I do not understand. How a guy, a center, a third string center, was allowed to place the ball wherever he wanted as time expired? That that no, that's not he, supposed to happen. He, Boomer Esiason said, "Hey, you're not allowed to do that." Um, he placed the ball. Not that the, they, he had no way of knowing which yard it was at. You realize if that's like a fourth and one, or that's a fourth that that's. I was like, is it this shouldn't be an inexact science like that. It should be an exact science. They should know exactly it should where be an the exact ball science. is. Am I wrong? It's a billion dollar industry. We got to get rid of the turf, and we got to have an exact science. This is just. It, it should it, be it, exact. It, 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 we have all the technology to make everything exact. Reviews and, and are you all are you good on time? By the way, you want to call it here because it's yeah, true. just because okay. uh, I got a kid and I got we, uh, yeah. No, I got you. Could we just? Could I just ask one more thing? Could we just yeah. end off with that. So the, the, you're a big Nets fan. I, I live right here. I'm 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 regular 14 minute train ride to the game. I yeah. go all the time. I go whenever some. Also, I like to go when someone big is around. LeBron, Steph, or whatever. Someone I'm a big Steph fan. So, so I'm just saying, what is the direction of the team now? Do they do do they build around the Ben Simmons? I whatever. No, I don't, ben Simmons no. is this clown. This do they build the around the Mikael team. Bridges and Cam Thomas and Claxton? Right. Do they try to go and get another start? Well, like, what are they doing? Mikael How Bridges, fast Cam Thomas. Do we go from yeah, sorry, go. Nick Claxton, Ben Simmons. Whatever we get from Ben Simmons is a bonus, but you don't really look at him as a pillar of the franchise. If they want to trade for another superstar, maybe they can do that. But like the win last night against the Miami Heat, huge win, huge and it shows win. you how it shows you how deep the team is. They and now they have a deep. team, right? It's not about KD, Kyrie, James Harden, a big three, seven eleven, big duo. It's about that must any. Drove you crazy? Yeah, yeah. I that mean, I'm I'm, I'm a New brothers. Jersey Nets we got fan. Those guys I'm... playing ball here, and they didn't. They couldn't even get on the court for more than thirteen games. I mean. It must yeah, have drove you it crazy. It was stupid. It was a, it was a scam. The the fix was in. Uh, they played half the games. It was all hype. It wasn't worth it. But now they have a team of guys that have bought in yeah. any given night, right? And the last thing I'll say, Cam and Thomas had. And the coaching had, is better. The coaching is better. Yeah, Jacques Vaughn is a way better coach than Steve Nash. Steve Nash. <laughs> Steve Nash. Cam Thomas had three 30-point games in a row. And then the Heat last night said, this kid's not dropping 30 on us. They held him to 13. And other guys rose up. Two Long Island Nets players rose up tj wofford and um uh armani brooks nobody saw that coming so the nets have a squad they have a okay, deep good. squad and, and i think they'll be all right i this look year. forward to going to games maybe we'll go to a game together if you're interested. i'm always there just hit me up man right. uh, i right. always go i got you thank you so much for your time i really appreciate it daniel thank you keep it up and uh if you need me to retweet or share just tag me when you post this and uh okay I'll have awesome eyes on but it. also we're gonna do more episodes so Keep that in mind. Well, right? then you then you're gonna have to pay me. You got to pay my, <laughs> my pay rate. First my one's feet. free. <laughs> Thanks, man. That. Have a good one. Thank you so much. You too. Bye bye.